Okay, how is everyone feeling tonight? Good? Woo! Let's get some energy in the room. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for welcoming me. Um, I'm so happy to be here and uh, speaking about React is just a pleasure always. So today we're gonna look at understanding React concurrent mode. So how many of you have heard about this already? A lot of hands, awesome. So did any of you try the uh, suspense in the legacy mode that exists as of today? Anyone? Not yet? Cool, okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at what it is and what it, what it has in store and what's coming up. Um, so before that, just, you know, let me just give you a quick intro. Um, I'm Anushri Subramani. Uh, I'm originally from India. I, I'm, I'm here from London today. I work, for, I'm, I work as a senior front-end developer in London for an agency. Uh, I'm pretty much a nerd. <laughs> so tech Twitter is, is my obsession plus distraction plus hobby plus, yeah, you get the picture. So I spend way too much time there. And uh, I am also really passionate about healthy living, uh, traveling, trekking, a, a bunch of weird stuff. So let's jump right in. Uh, big, big disclaimer, none of this is, is like stable, so please don't go home and start tweaking your production app and, and get, get into trouble, please, no. And, and Dan will kill me if I do not give this disclaimer, <laughs> so I have to give this. So this is like completely experimental, the React uh, feature concurrent mode is, is still an experimental branch itself, it's not merged into the stable release. So this is just for you to get, get your, you know, thoughts flowing, get that mental model, get an understanding of what's coming, what's in the pipeline, so that as, in, as you build your app and as you're making changes, you know, okay, this, this is coming up, so I should avoid using this, or I should avoid this pattern, so that my app is more compatible for the migration. So this is, that's, that's the basic idea, and always un knowing what's coming always helps, especially for me, so I, I just wanted to come here and share this with you all. <coughs> So let's just start with your definition, right? So concurrent mode is a set of new features that help React apps stay responsive and also gracefully adju adjust to the user's device capabilities and network speed. I don't know how much this makes sense uh, as, a, as a statement, but hopefully as we you know, jump into it, you, you'll get, get the picture of what, what this statement is talking about. But uh, basically the, the whole idea behind concurrent mode is that they, they really want to you know, step up the uh, user experience to the next level and also bring a consistent you know, feel across uh, different devices, different network uh, speeds. You know, or those are really hard problems, but if, if they come as part of the library itself, then it, it, it just becomes very graceful and uniform and it's not our, our burden anymore. So, so React is doing the heavy lifting for us. That's basically what it is. So what are the features of concurrent mode? So there are two main uh, features, which is interruptible rendering, or also known as time slicing. And there's intentionally uh, loading sequences, which is enabled via Suspense API. So we're gonna look at both of these and get an idea of what it is and how it's helping us. So let's first look at time slicing. So the, the image, that the first image that you're seeing is, is React as it is today, which which has blocking rendering, but what, what, what this basically means is, let's say, uh, so the JavaScript running that you see is basically React rendering something in the main thread, right? And while that is happening, if there is an uh, event, let's say there is a click, or you're trying to type something into a text box, your app is not responsive, because unfortunately, JavaScript has only one thread, one main thread, right? So if that main thread is blocked, by you know, React rendering something else or computing something else, then it is not able to process your events, right? So, so basically, your, your click or your, your typing, you, you, feel, you feel that stutter or that, uh, you know, that, that not so great user experience, your, your typing is slow, uh, or the results come in all funny, so the user experience is not great, right? So we are trying to fix that in concurrent mode. So we have what is known as interruptible rendering. So React has changed a lot of semantics internally and heuristics to accomplish this. So what they've basically done is uh, they, they periodically 
check whether they have to yield the main thread back to the browser. So let's say React is com computing something. It will periodically you know, call a function called should yield, and it, it checks whether it has to yield to the browser. And, it, and it, when it does, it, it, it sees whether there is something in the queue. Let's, let's say there is a click or there is a you know, key press that it has to process, which is obviously higher priority than what React is doing right now. So it, 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 it just puts that into the scheduler, assigns higher priority to it, uh, processes that, and then comes back to whatever it was processing earlier. So the rendering that React was doing is now, it's, it's able to pause it, go attend to something else, and then come back and resume. So this, this kind of interruptible rendering is giving us the advantage of having a you know, responsive app, even when a lot of computation is happening, and even when your main thread is supposedly very busy. right? So this is what is happening, basically. Um, so the, the analogy that the React team and Dan Abramov use to explain this is the version control. So all of us use Git as version control, right? So we, we make branches off of master, and we start building a feature or something, right? And then we, 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 we keep building on top of that branch. And if there is a sudden, suddenly there is a hot fix or some bug fix that you need to immediately work on, then you can swap into another branch, you know, work on that, get it merged, and then go back to your own branch and, you know, rebase, and then you can merge it in. So you're able to work in parallel. You get the idea, right? You're able to work on multiple things in parallel without having to be locked down by you know, the single feature that you're working on. You don't have to wait to finish the feature to attend to the bug fix. So that, that's kind of the analogy that they're going for. That's very similar to what's happening here. right? So you're able to do multiple tasks parallelly. So that's the, that's the idea. So this is another diagram that gives you a better picture of what's happening. So at the top, you have the synchronous mode, which is how React is today. So the, and the big yellow strip that you see here is just a, a big chunk of computation that's happening on the main thread. Uh, so because of that, the, you have to watch for the, the green bars. Those are the browser events. So the browser event is at the very end in, in the first diagram, right? So in the second one, if you see, it's very interesting. So you have like strips of yellow and then in the, in the middle, you see strips of green, which is the browser events, which is your key, key press, which is your click event. So React is able to like do like you know switching between a, a, a computation or processing, and then it goes goes and yields the main thread back to the browser, and the browser is able to handle those events, and then you're going to come back and you know continue with your computation and back and forth. So this gives you a very very consistent UI. So you you will you will not feel that oh okay you you will never feel that oh, you you press a button and then your entire app is like frozen, you're not able to scroll, you're not able to do anything. You won't get such you know, bad user experiences anymore. Uh, so that's what we are really going for here. Um, so how, how, does this, how does React do this behind the scenes? I was, I was pretty curious. So what really happens is it, it, runs, it, it continues to do all these computations in memory. So it has, similar to, again, coming back to the branches example. So it, it when, when it's computing something, it'll have it in memory, and then because uh, because React has fibers, it, it it is able to control and un understand where it stops and uh, a lot of metadata as part of the fiber object, and then you you switch back to the main thread, and then you come back and you're able to really get a picture of this concurrent mode. So it's so don't get confused by the name. The initially they called it as async mode, and now I think they're sticking with concurrent mode. So, so hopefully this gives you an understanding of what time slicing is and how it really, really benefits us. So the, the best thing is you don't need to do anything much. Like there is no API for this. It's, it's something that is built into the core of React. The only thing you need to do is migrate your app and you know, uh, change the root of your app to uh, support concurrent mode, which is not a small task. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're like React 14 or 15, forget about it. It may be a little bit of a challenge. But once you, once you do that, it, you, the rewards are you know, uh, great. So absolutely worth trying it out. But not now. 
<laughs> hold your horses. We are still experimental, right? So once, we st once things are stable, you can, you can just go ahead and try those things, but not right now. So yeah, so you get all of these benefits out of the box uh, with time slicing. So let's go ahead and look at intentional loading sequences or suspense API. So suspense lets your components wait for something before they can render, and it also shows a fallback while waiting. So this is the, the crux of what suspense does. So this, this, might, this definition might sound a little similar. You may like, oh, I, al I already do this using async, await, and things like that. But if I don't have time to cover all of those aspects today, but if you do go back, go back to your you know, React docs and read about it, they compare it with different approaches, and they say that how suspense is a lot better in, uh, in terms of solving a lot more problems. Uh, so do go back and take a look at the dots. It's, it's really good. We're going to take, take a look at some examples as to what suspense really does and what it brings us. So this is a very straightforward example. So don't look at too much. As, don't look into too much as to what this resource is at this point, because uh, since suspense is in such a you know preliminary phase where we still do not have data fetching libraries. Uh, so suspense. Like, like the definition says, right? It, it waits for something, so it's, it's, it has to go hand in hand with a data fetching library like Apollo or Fetch or anything that you're using, right? So all of those libraries are still working on building that, that bridge with, with, with React. So that, that library is still in, in progress. It's, it's not done yet. So what we are sh using here to show this example is just something like a mock. Uh, data to, sh to, un to make you understand how suspense works, but the actual APIs and the, and the third party the libraries that you need to really start using suspense are not ready yet. So, so you have a profile details uh, component and a profile timeline component. Uh, you have, so this, this, this line is what actually uh, makes the difference. We'll come back to this once I see this component. So you have a profile page component. So you, this is your syntax for suspense, right? You have uh, you add the suspense component and you specify something known as a fallback, uh, which kicks in when the data within uh, suspense is not loaded yet, uh, namely profile details in this case, right? So if so, let's go back to profile details now. So in, inside profile details, we have resource dot user dot read. So when this executes. If the data is not available, then the suspense get suspense fallback gets rendered. So the very first thing you will see is loading profile. Once this uh, once this data is available, then uh, that gets displayed, and you see that suspense can be nested. So that, as this example shows, so you have another suspense, and uh, that again has a fallback of its own, uh, which is wrapping profile timeline. So inside profile timeline, we, ha we are again reading posts, right? So if, if posts are not available, it's going to show this fallback. And once it comes up, it's all going to get unlocked, and you're going to see all of the data. So that was, a, that was a very straightforward example. There are a lot more APIs to suspense, and there are a lot of cool things that you can do with it. Hopefully, this, some of these examples will shed light on what its capabilities are and give you some more clarity. Uh, so let's see this first example right here in Code Sandbox. Hopefully Wi-Fi works. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, so the first scenario that we're going to look at is receded to skeleton to complete. I'll, I'll try to explain what that is. So these are just uh, terms that the React team is using to describe states of your app. Um, so receded state means that you're taking this, you're, you're going one step back from your a previous state. Let's say you're clicking on a button, which is taking you to another screen. So that's a transition. So if you're so you're going from a page full of data to just showing a loading indicator. So that's that's a receded state because it feels like you're taking a step back. Whereas if you click on a button and then you wait a little while and then you show some data and then progressively load the rest of the data then that's that's like a skeleton mode right and it's like a step forward so you know that okay this has already loaded and further down the down the page other, other stuff is still loading so you see a, a a progress there so that's a skeleton state and complete is when everything is loaded <coughs> 
and uh, the waiting that you do when you click on the button, you 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 st stay on the same page for a, a little while. You can configure what that is, how much you want to wait. That that state is known as the pending state. So hopefully, the, when I when we look at this example, things are more clear than uh, my ramblings. So all right. So let's take a look at this code right here. Is it visible? Can you see it? No? <laughs> uh, oh god, no. <laughs> okay, I think this is the maximum I can bump it up. All right, so we have an app component. So within this, so ignore all this is just basic React logic, right? You're conditionally loading, loading one component to the other. So the, the interesting part is you have a suspense uh, and a fallback inside which you're, you're choosing which component to load. So it's, when you're using suspense, it's, it's a good practice to have one suspense component uh, wrapper at, at the very top, you know, as like a catch-all kind of a thing. And it's also good to have an error boundary on top of your suspense so that if there's an exception in any of your uh, data calls, then it'll get caught. Um, all right, so moving on. In the home, so what, what in the home page component, we just have a head, heading and a button. Uh, and we have a profile page, which contains profile details, one more suspense, within which you have a profile timeline. Okay, so, and you have profile details component, which is doing, uh, it is reading some data and then displaying it. Similarly, you have profile timeline, which is doing the same thing. So when we click on open profile, you see that it goes to, it shows loading the app, which is the fallback of this particular suspense right here. Let me do that again. So you, you're on homepage, right? So when you click on open profile, so you see loading the app, that's the first state, and then you have a Ringo star that that's get loaded, which is the name, I, I believe, profile detail. And then slowly you see that the profile timeline is loading, right? So were you able to identify the states? So, okay, so from once we click on this open profile, this is the receded state. And then now we are in skeleton, this is completed. Is it making sense? Yeah. All right. So this is, how, 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 does it, how does it make you feel when you go from like, you know, home page? Okay, assume there's a lot of data here and it's like a full-blown full page, not just a sample. And then you click on a button and, all, and you're taken to like a blank screen with just a loading indicator. So that's a bit of a jarring experience for a user. It's like taking a step back. So the React team is like trying to say that this is not the best user experience as per uh, a lot of uh, HCI research and uh, things like that. So on the other hand, so th let's move on to the next example, right? Which is, a, which is a slightly better experience because we go from pending to skeleton to completed, right? So let's... Let's look at, let's run this code first and see how that feels. So when you cl click on open profile, so we wait a little while. Let me do that again. So once you click on open profile, you wait a little while, and then you directly see the Ringo star being displayed. So you see a progress, right? You see something there, and then it's, it's loading the rest of the data down below. With, so you see that there is, it's like a progressive uh, enhancement. So that is a better experience compared to the previous one. So how do we accomplish that? So Suspense has a additional APIs, which lets us do that. So the code is pretty much the same as the previous one, with the exception of uh, this right here, which, which is a use transition hook that we're using. So the, the use transition hook, it lets you specify uh, like a timeout as to how long you, you want to wait, what is the maximum amount, number of uh, milliseconds that you want to wait in, in this particular screen before moving in onto the next screen. So remember this is like, uh, I, I'll, I'll come back to this and I'll tell you why, why it, although this says 10 seconds, if you notice, we did not wait for 10 seconds here, right? So let me come back to that. So what 
use transition returns. It's, it's, it gives us a start transition, which is a function, uh, and is pending, which is like a Boolean flag to find out whether the transition has happened or not for us to just show the loading indicator, basically. So this tra start transition function, we wrap the uh, you know, click handler uh, surrounding it. So that basically defers that action right, from executing so that you don't see that additional loading the app state. So what use transition basically is allowing us to do is it, it avoids the unnecessary intermediary states from being displayed to the user so that you have a better user experience. If, you, if you're seeing three different you know, uh, like state transition in under like two seconds, that's like, a, that's like a jarring experience. So this is from all of these inputs the, that uh, they've taken is from a lot of user experience oriented research and human computer interaction research, user perception research. So the, the, the React team has basically taken all of those inputs in and they've tried to bake it into React so that all of us individually do not have to worry about these problems and try to you know, come up with some hacks or use you know, timeouts and things like that or debouncing uh, you know, and all, all sorts of hacks to get a uni unique, uh, you know, uniform user experience. Rather than, rather than that, if it's baked into React and it's declarative, it's a much better way of implementing it. So that is what basically start transition does. So this, so coming back to this point of timeout, right? So React always prefers to be to, to transition to uh, you know a skeleton mode. So although we have given ten seconds, when you it'll it'll wait for a little while, and as soon as this particular data comes in, it'll it'll transition to the next page. So because React prefers to go. It doesn't want to stay in the pending state because that again is is like making the user wait at and stare at nothing basically, right? So rather, you know, React will prefer to transition to uh, the skeleton state once some data has come in, and then progressively show the placeholder for the rest of the data. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, <laughs> if not, you can catch me later, or yell at me later. <laughs> okay. Uh, so moving on. What else do we have? Oh, suspense list. Oh, awesome. So suspense list helps us coordinate many components that can suspend by orchestrating the order in which these components are relieved to, revealed to the user. So what we saw right now was just one suspense component, right? And it, it having m multiple components underneath it. Uh, but what if we want to like orchestrate multiple suspense uh, elements and coordinate how they load? Basically, right? We don't have access to their states. It's not easy to for us to manually get access to the individual uh, states and coordinate them. It's 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 not it's not uh, we can't do it gracefully. Uh, so, you no know, React give, and especially because the whole rendering process has become interruptible now. So this this you would not have felt the pinch of suspense list. You would not have felt that you need an API like suspense list earlier because React was uh, functioning in like a blocking mode, right? The, the time slicing that we talked about, it, it it did not yield back to the browser. So it used to finish one chunk of work and then yield to the browser. But now since it's like pausing and switching between tasks, you will you will really feel the need for suspense list a lot more. Uh, let's see how that works. So. Let's see the. So the code-wise, it's 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 very simple API. So you basically you just wrap your uh, suspense components uh, in a suspense list component, and there's a you can specify the reveal order. So you can say whether you want it to be forwards, backwards, or together. What that basically means is, uh, if you say forwards, then the first suspense gets revealed. And then the second one, regardless of how the API call response comes back to us. If you say backward, then the other way. If you say together, it waits until all of the data has has come in uh, for both of the suspenses, and then it reveals it together. <coughs> so, if you take a look, it's too too it's too fast to. I think it looks like both, uh, for a second, I think you would have seen that the first one came uh, first and then the second one, because we have specified forwards. Uh, I don't know if this will be noticeable if I change it. Let's try. 
not really. <laughs> It's too fast. But you, you can always go, up, go back and play with it. Uh, not in your production app, guys, in your own, <laughs> in your own sample app. All right. So that, that was suspense list, which is, which is another nice API to have. Moving on, this, so this is, these are some things that I uh, have to mention, because when we first learn about suspense, it's very confusing as to what it really is. OK, is this, is this something that? You know, is going to help me fetch data. Is, is it going to work with async-related issues? What is it really? It, it raises a lot of questions. So th it's, it's beautifully documented. So all of this is from lifted from the docs, and it's it's beautifully documented there because a lot of people do get these questions for the first time they read about suspense. It's it's not a data fetching implementation. So React is is not going to be helping us uh, replace fetch or GraphQL or anything like that. No. So it and it, it it doesn't care what you use because you're going to be using some uh, library to integrate with it. Uh, yeah, it's not a ready-to-use client, so it it does not replace it, and it does not couple data and view together. They, you still have that separation. So you, you just basically what it what it's helping you do is coordinate your async data and uh, assets or images or whatever it is with the UI state and really manage get a granular level control on your how your UI states are working without bit, your code becoming imperative. So it's a very declarative way of doing it. <clears throat> so, and what it actually lets you do is uh, it lets data fetching libraries deeply integrate with React, like we just mentioned. It lets you orchestrate intentionally designed loading states. So if you, if you t tweak with the timeout values in, in the example that we saw, you, you see a different experience. You can change the placeholders. You can, you can get a lot of different uh, user experience based on what your designers really want. So it gives you all those options. And it helps us avoid race conditions. Uh, you can read the docs to understand how it helps us avoid race conditions. Uh, I do not have time to go over them, but it's very interesting. So you should go back and uh, take, a, take a look. Uh, so hopefully by now you're all excited to try suspense. <laughs> Are you? Yes? No. You're like, no. After this presentation, I, I am not trying suspense. No. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, no. <laughs> I hope I didn't ruin it for you. But if you are, you can, you can just you know, try uh, the code sandbox from the, the docs, use that as a base, and build on top of it. Uh, because the actual data fetching libraries are not there yet. So once they come in, you can, you can try it in a full-on uh, sample app of your own. Uh, OK, quickly, I just want to show you one last thing. So DevTools has, uh, has been revamped, and Brian Mon has done a massively amazing job on it. So it really helps you uh, investigate your suspense. And so if so, this is the root level, uh, not root level, the parent level kind of uh, suspense component right here. So if I suspend it, you see the placeholder right here. If I go down and select this and suspend it, you see the placeholder popping up right here as loading. So it really helps you. Uh, see what are the different states and the different combinations uh, you know, of your place, when the placeholder comes in, uh, when is the, uh, the spinner coming in. So all of those things, it really helps you. So DevTools has your back. Don't worry about it. So what else? What else? Yeah, so like I mentioned, the, the whole point of why all of these features were, were baked into React was because of all the research and, uh, around user experience. Uh, and you know they they're really doing a lot of great things to improve user experience in, at Facebook as well as for all of us. Uh, so if you really want to migrate, this is what you need to do. Not now, but as you can see, <laughs> you can do some preparatory steps for the future. So the first thing that you can do is, if whatever version of React you're in, try to keep up with the new late, latest stable versions of React, right? So that really helps. So whenever your in the stable version of a concurrent mode comes in, you can, you'll be ready. The other thing is enable strict mode. How many of you have enabled strict mode in your apps? Show of hands. No one? No one? Just one person? OK. I think this is the first uh, backlog task for all of you. <laughs> Go and create a ticket for enabling strict mode. So the, the best thing about strict mode is it's, uh, you, you can just add it in one particular React subtree. You don't need to go and add it to the root, unlike concurrent mode. 
okay? So you, you won't get bombarded with so many uh, warnings in your console that you'd get overwhelmed. So you can like tackle it in one subtree at a time until all of your errors are gone. So only if all of your errors are gone, you can dream of concurrent mode in, in production, because without it, you'll, you, you cannot, uh, you know, you'll see a lot of warnings and errors. So you, your app has to be strict mode compliant for, uh, for, for your app to migrate to concurrent mode in the future. And then you have to play the waiting game. <laughs> so hope and pray that the React team comes up with a stable version soon. Hope and pray, that, or you can also contribute, you know, you can help help out, uh, it's open source. So you can, you can help out the React team, or you can help out your favorite data fetching library uh, team by, you know, building those uh, integration libraries. Uh, so once all of those are in place, you can, you can migrate to something called blocking mode, which is, which is like an intermediary mode. So the, the mode that, so whatever we have right now, React as we know it today, is, is called as legacy mode, okay? So legacy mode to concurrent mode is like a huge jump. So instead, what the React team has come up with a migration strategy where you have a blocking mode in the middle, which is like a, you know, somewhere, somewhere like a bridge or an intermediary stop point. So you first migrate to blocking mode and see how your app is behaving and then take the big, big leap onto concurrent mode rather than just making the leap in one step. So, but all of these you can do only when once React has released it. I am reiterating so many times because otherwise, uh, you know, I don't want to be misguiding anybody. So just remember, it's not ready yet. Okay, so these are some of my references. Uh, and thank you. <laughs>